<clears throat> Welcome to Mass at St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson. Today we celebrate the first Sunday of Advent. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the people of St. Michael the Archangel Parish. For more information about our parish or volunteer activities, please head to our website at stmichael77.org or see our Sunday Bulletin. Knights of Columbus are hosting a free Christmas cookie celebration Friday, December 15th from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. Come and sip hot chocolate, cocoa and decorate fresh baked sugar cookies. Christmas choir program will be held on Saturday, December 16th after the 4 p.m. Mass. Come, join us for an evening of song and music as our choirs and parishioners showcase their talents. For the penance and holiday schedule, see the bulletin. The office will be closed Friday, December the 8th for the Immaculate Conception and Mass times are at 8.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. The Knights of Columbus will be leading the Rosary at 6 p.m. The Parish Center will be closed after morning Mass. It is our custom not to leave Mass until the choir has finished singing. As we prepare for Mass, let us silence our cell phones. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brother, and let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, oh my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, <coughs> Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming. So they gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. The Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways, and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage, that you may rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought, wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eye ever seen, any God but you, doing such deeds for those who wait for you for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you the potter. We are all the work of your hands. The Word of the Lord. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hearken, from your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your, rouse your power and come to save us. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man, whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life, and we will call upon your name. Lord, A reading from the, from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord.
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Show us, Lord, your love and grant us your salvation. Alleluia. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders a gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all. Watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Our pianist is in St. Louis. His nephew is retiring from the Air Force with 27 years. So they're going to have a big ceremony and he wanted to be there. And then they're going to go back to their hometown. So another weekend without him and he'll be back. Noah, kindly let me do the alleluia. He said he was unprepared. Can you believe that from this guy? No, no, no. I think he wants me to audition for something. I don't know. But anyway. The new church year has started with the beginning of this Mass. We are now in year B2. Bingo. Um, I used to call that for two years with the Knights of Columbus. But we start a new church year, and our gospel this year is the Gospel of Mark, the gospel that's the shortest. But the gospel that Matthew and Luke are based upon, they took Mark's writings and they added other information they got from other people. Luke especially we got information from directly from our Blessed Mother about the life of the child and baby Jesus. So we see how those three inter interact. But we just got finished with the, year, the end of the year, and at the end of the year, we hear the end times. Well, now the first two Sundays of Advent, the new year, we hear the same thing. Be prepared. Because Jesus comes three times. First, he comes at Christmas. So the Advent situation is preparing us for Jesus coming at Christmas. He comes again in the sacraments and in Mass all the time. And the last time, the third thing he comes is at the end of time. And that's what the end of the church year celebrates. So they just happen to bump up against each other. But they're celebrating two different comings of Jesus Christ but they still have the same message be prepared be watchful be alert we need more alerts be alert and Jesus can't get that point across enough this morning's readings he said don't grow drunk with carousing and drunkenness he said don't let the anxieties of daily life stop you from being watchful being alert having a relationship with him. We are, we are alert in many other areas of our lives. We're prepared. We have health insurance. We have car insurance. We have house insurance. We have all kinds of insurances. And we have, we have fire detectors, and we have CO2 detectors, and we have cameras that watch outside the house, and we have alarm systems, and we're all prepared that way. And then we have seat belts. If we wear our seat belt, we're prepared. If we don't, we're not. But I think you're prepared for another reality anyway. But a lot of people today still go against seat belts. 
It's amazing to me. After watching semi, I've been in semi, seeing semi accidents when I was driving, I, I was a firm believer in seatbelts. But we have many, many different ways of being aware and alert and watchful. If the dam wasn't down Arizona Farms, the Magma Dam, you and I would have to buy flood insurance to be prepared for the 100 year flood that hasn't happened since 1977 when it happened twice in the same year. So we have all these things that we do to be watchful, to be alert, be prepared. We go to the doctor, we go to the dentist, we go there, we go there. So how do we prepare to be watchful and alert with the spiritual stuff? Because that's the natural stuff. And Jesus says we get caught so up by much in that natural stuff that we ignore the supernatural stuff. Him, specifically. And so we are able to be prepared, to be watchful, to be alert, by prayer, by prayer. Not just saying grace before meals. Couples come in, used to come in for marriage, and I would say, have you prayed together yet? Well, we say grace together, but that's not what I'm talking about. Do you pray the rosary together? Do you ask God to help you with your relation? Oh, no, Father, I could never pray with him or her that way. Okay, then. Time for another lesson. The advantages of prayer. Prayer is what? Talking to God. Prayer is talking to God. And here's the thing about prayer, and the other things I'm going to mention, if it's our priority, they will happen. Father, it's been three days since I prayed to God. That's a sin. One of the sins is not praying to God every day. It's a confessible sin, too. And I'll say, well, what's getting in the way? And they'll give me all these excuses, and I say, is it on your calendar? Is it at the same time every day? Do you make an effort to be with God or just blow it off and say, I don't have time? Some of the big CEOs of Fortune 500 companies that are Christian, they get up before everybody else in the morning and they pray and they read scripture. Some people like to do it at night after everybody's gone to bed. Some people do it little pieces during the day. They have developed a habit. But if we don't make it a priority, prayer doesn't happen. And talking to God needs to happen because how are we going to have a relationship with Him otherwise? And how are we going to be able to listen and be open to the things He sends us to be prepared to change course if we're getting off track? So prayer, talking to God, making it a priority. The second thing to be prepared to be alert, reading of Scripture. Oh, Father, the Bible's so boring. What part are you reading? There is a boring book in the Bible. It's called Numbers. Because all it is is this guy had so much of this stuff and this stuff and this, this guy had this much and this guy had this much and there were this many things, this many. It's just a whole bunch of numbers. It's boring. Skip it. Start with the Gospels. Start with the book of Genesis. Those are cool stories. But don't try and read the whole thing in one night or one morning. How many people now are telling me, Father, I am taking this thing where they're reading the Bible over the course of a year. And they have pamphlets for that, or they have it online. And they say, it's wonderful. It's amazing. But they've made it a priority to do that because scriptures enable us to know God, enable us to know Jesus Christ, fill us with joy and hope. If you've never felt the power of scripture, then you haven't read it. And here's what my evangelical turned Catholic priest friend said from Louisville, Kentucky. If you want to get the benefits of Scripture, read it aloud. It's supposed to be proclaimed. If within three or four minutes you don't feel the Holy Spirit with you, then you're not reading it aloud. You're whispering it. Scripture is what we all based on. Everything's based on Scripture. The Jewish religion which we come from, Scripture. What do we have here? Liturgy of the Word, Liturgy of the Eucharist. Scripture. 
I love when Protestants say, you guys don't read the Bible. I say, we read the Bible every day. No. I say, yeah, come see. No, I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, you're afraid you'll change. So reading scripture is one way to be prepared and be alert because you get the messages that are in the Bible. People say, your number one course that people always ask priests to teach in Scripture, Book of Revelation. The Book of Revelation. The Book of Revelation is easy. Keep your nose straight and you'll go to heaven. That's it. Book of Revelation. <laughs> scripture. Prayer. The third thing, church. Go to church as often as you can. We are people of God and we need to see other people of God. We need to know that we belong to a community. We need to know that there are other people like us. And if we don't go to church constantly, we don't know that. The other thing about church is God has given us the sacraments to be prepared, to be full of grace. So when the time comes, we are ready. So be prepared. Prayer, scripture, the church. All three of these things tie in together, and if we want, we can make it a priority. If we don't make it a priority, it'll fall by the wayside. When I was a layperson, I would write on my calendar, with all the kind of other stuff I had, first Saturday, confession. I knew the first Saturday I would have to go to confession. I made preparations for it. I made sure I was there. At least once a month. If I committed a mortal sin during the rest of the, the, the month, then I would go to confession then. Oh, Father, you didn't commit mortal sins. Yes, I did. We all commit them. Second, make it a habit. Priests have found out that we are supposed to pray one hour a day in front of the Blessed Sacrament in order to be right, mentally prepared. And we found that if we don't do it first thing in the morning, what happens during the day will keep us away. Now, I know one priest, he does his holy hour at 2 o'clock in the afternoon because he says, just in case I fall asleep reading this Bible, I can also make it my nap time. I know another priest that schedules his nap every day at 2 o'clock. It's on the calendar. It's on the, the parish calendar. Everybody knows you don't call it 2 o'clock for Monsignor. And he was shocked when he found out nobody else did that. So it's of our priority, we're going to make it happen. So be prepared, be alert. Doesn't take a whole lot. It just means being faithful to our faith, being faithful to our Catholic faith, being faithful to prayer, reading the Bible, and coming to church, and looking around and seeing everybody else, but also partaking of the sacraments. So as this Advent season starts, our brand new church here, we can make a resolution. Be prepared means I'm going to do this, this, and this every day so that I can be aware and alert when Jesus comes. God bless you. I believe in one God.
As Advent begins, we hear our Lord challenging us to be alert and ready for Him. The prayers we offer for others express a faith that is attentive and alive. That the Holy Catholic Church may be united in fidelity to the Pope and bishops. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that politicians may act with integrity and keep God's ways in mind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that people distracted by worldly pleasures may return to the saving grace of the Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that each one of us gathered here may seek pardon and peace in the sacrament of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that the mercy and love may perfect those who have died. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Loving Father, please hear our prayers as we prepare for the return of your Son by hearing his word and offering his sacrifice as we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design he formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise, which now we dare to hope. And so the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right that gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work in the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and fill this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we retain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, the same Michael and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, the servant Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, 
the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassionate, merciful Father, gather yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, all are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, that bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace to see grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace to see grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now as we welcome in passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits, prowl about the world, seek the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come...